Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and uh, welcome to episode 153 of the Spears Sunnies podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and I don't know why I did made that noise. <laughs> um, oh, man, I think I'm a little bit sick uh, in the fucking brain, clearly. Why would I start a podcast like that? No, I'm like, I'm sick, dude. I've been working too hard and I'm, a- and I'm not happy. I've had, the, I've had the, like a, not a good... Well, I've had a great week. I'm happy. I've done a lot of shit. I'm productive. I've been performing heaps. But I can't breathe out of my fucking nose. So excuse me sounding like an idiot. Dude, I'm so fucking angry. Do you, know what, do you know what happened to me? That's like full on ruined my, my, my life for a whole month. So this uh, comedian that I like, Brian Callen, he put out uh, a comedy special. And uh, it's a thing that you can buy. And I'm like, oh, I've done one of them. I'd love to support another comedian who's doing the, the paid digital download. Death Threads Don't Scare Me. Still available. Go get it. LouisSpears.com slash watch. I know there's a lot of you who haven't. Go and fucking get it. Anyway, I was like, oh, cool. Another comic doing digital download stuff. I'll support that guy. So I, I click his link, right? And uh, it takes me to iTunes and it goes, oh, sorry, you can't... Um, you can't buy this from the Australian store. You need to switch to the American store. I'm like, okay, cool. So I hit the button. It just goes switch to American store. I hit the button and then it takes me to the American store and then I go to buy it. And then iTunes is like, oh, you can't buy from the uh, American store because you are from Australia. And I was like, oh, okay, whatever. I guess I can't buy Brian's special. I'll get it from somewhere else or whatever. I can't get it on iTunes. And then I just didn't think about it again. Sorry. Then, right, what happened is uh, I just forget about it and I go about my day and then I try and open up Apple Music like eight hours later. And it goes, oh, you uh, can't use Apple Music from the American store. You need to switch back to the Australian store. And I was like, oh, that's right, because I switched to the American store. That's right. So uh, I Google how to switch from American store to the Australian store because for some reason it wasn't like going to the fucking American store. It was, it, the American, going to the American one was just one button. I hit it and I was there. It switched everything for me automatically. Doesn't work the other way around for some fucking reason, right? So I Google it and it goes, go into settings, open up your Apple ID and then change your store. So I do that and I got to change store. And then it goes, oh, you can't change your store because you're currently subscribed to Apple Music. You need to cancel your Apple Music subscription to change your store. And I thought, no, I don't, because my subscription to Apple Music is with the Australian store. Let me change back. Anyway, I Google it. Turns out that's what I have to do. So I'm like, whatever, I'll cancel it and then I'll resubscribe. So I canceled it. And then I go, switch to Australian store. And it says, you have to wait until your Apple Music subscription runs out until you can switch. My fucking subscription doesn't end until the end of the month. I am stuck on the fucking American iTunes store until the end of the month. I can't download apps. I can't buy anything. I can't listen to music for a month because initially I was like oh whatever I'll just download fucking Spotify and use that for a bit and I can't download apps dude I can't listen to music for a month it's been it's been five days and I'm going insane I don't know what to do silence I just sit here in fucking silence now Bro, Curse's album came out that day. The day before, rather. So his album came out, and I was like, I can't fucking listen to it anyway. Do you know how I listened to his fucking album? I had to go on YouTube, and 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 on my laptop, and plug in headphones, and sit there at my fucking desk going through the YouTube playlist. Because I can't watch it on iTunes, listen to it on iTunes, because my I've got stuck in the fucking American store to the end of the month. I can't listen to music, bro. I just sit here in silence. There's only so many podcasts I can listen to, man. I listen to like three podcasts in a week and then I'm just like, all right, my brain's full. <laughs> That's all. My brain's full. 
Too many words. What I really want to do is sit down and listen to the same song over and over again. Like I have been doing for the past five years of my existence, but I can't now because I'm stuck on the fucking American store and it won't let me change it back. So hey, hey, thanks iTunes. Really great. It's actually, I actually don't know what to do with my, with my ears. Like I sit here and I have to do like a boring task. What, I don't, what do I do? You know how desperate I've gotten? I've started listening to fucking audio dramas. Do you know what an audio drama is? Okay, imagine, right, a movie. Now take away uh, the visuals and uh, there's your audio drama. You listen to a movie. I've been buying audio dramas about the fucking Warhammer universe. Do you know how fucking nerdy that shit is, dude? I'm listening to, like, voice actors pretend to be eight-foot-tall space marines fighting aliens because my music doesn't work. That's how desperate I've become. Because I'm not going to sit there at my fucking laptop with my cord plugged in at a desk. Who listens to music at their desk just sitting there like, oh, I like listening to music while I sit still and do nothing else. This is a good song. Yeah. Uh, that's Dude, that's how an alien would listen to music if he found out about it. Oh, humans like music. Time to listen to music. Time to listen. Time to listen to music. Blog five. Time. I uh, press. Uh, open up iTunes. Sit down at desk. I don't know why they beep, but there's an alien, right? Time to listen to music. iTunes. Ariana Grande. Whoop. Somehow has had 37 relationships in the last six months and men are still the problem instead of Ariana Grande being a shit girlfriend. Play. Thank you. Next. He sits at his desk going, thank you. Next. Dude, any girl that connects with the song Thank You Next is a shit girlfriend. (laughs) Thank you. Next, I'm not the problem. <laughs> it's all men. I hate my dad. Dude, that's the fucking daddy issues anthem of the fucking year. If you can sing, if you can sing a song about uh your last, you know, two years of relationships, serious relationships, and you can like list off ten dudes, hey man, you suck at dating. <laughs> and it's not them. Thank you. Next, I'm a secret cunt. It's always the sweetest looking girls, man. Do you like my outfit? What I'm wearing? I'm wearing a fucking Kappa tracksuit top. I feel like I would. I, I, I look. I look like I would definitely rob you at the train station. Cause is the thing. I could have gone with the with the Adidas tracksuit with just the lines, but I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get instead. I'm gonna get the tracksuit that has two naked women facing away from each other. Or is it a man? Is it a man and a woman? Oh, one of them has tits and one of them doesn't. Oh, it's a man and a woman. So this whole fucking jacket is just an Ariana Grande relationship. They're just ignoring each other, facing the opposite direction. (laughs) Thank you. Next, give me your fucking shoes, cunt. Your shoes are your life. Make the decision. Oh, man. I've been... uh I think I've been smashing it too hard. Been working a little bit too hard recently. I think I had like three, four, eighteen-hour days in a row. You know what it is? It's one because when I get up really early, and then I and then that night I perform. It fucks me. I think um, what I need to start doing is I need to start uh, now that I have Keel and editing more often thanks to Patreon. Uh, I need to start splitting my days up. I think and just having a rest in the middle. It's like write and film in the morning. Do something leisurely and then perform at night because otherwise I just wake up at literally 6am and I get home at 11pm and I'm like, ah, I think I'm having a crisis, (laughs) but I can't address it because I'm about to fall asleep and then I die and then I wake up at 6 and I'm like, time to rise and grind, baby, time to destroy my sanity. Um, No, but I'm really enjoying it. I'm not... uh, uh, contrary to how the first 10 minutes of the podcast has sounded, I'm not heading towards a breakdown. I tell you what, though, is about to fucking send me into a breakdown, dude. This Discord, 
this shit that's been happening in the Discord. If you're not, if you don't know about it, uh, if you join Patreon and uh, you're a level two supporter, uh, there's an exclusive Discord, which is basically just a group chat that I'm in all the time. And uh, for, I did the dumbest shit in there the other time. You know, normally it, the banter's, the banter's there, but it's never. I'm never like the target. Uh, last night I got fucking bullied again because I just came home exhausted and I just did dumb shit. So I came home. It was like 11 p.m. and I was like, "Oh, what what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm just gonna read uh, some comic books." And then I was so tired, I took a photo of my pile of comic books that I haven't read yet, and I put it in the Discord. And I was like, "Oh man, I'm so stressed about how many comics I have to read." And uh, I didn't realize that when I took the photo, there was just a stack of condoms <laughs> next to the fucking comic books. So it was just, and then the next fucking two hours in this fucking Discord was just people bullying me for my fucking choice of condoms. And uh, anyway, it got absolutely fucking out of hand. I'm trying to find this thing. What ended up happening? Ah, here we go. I got it. Anyway, they they all fucking ended up bullying me about my condom choice, and I was so deliriously tired. I was just, you know when you you know when you're in the group chat and you and you're the just the target of ridicule, and the only thing you can do is just watch those messages pop up while your self esteem rots. <laughs> like that, and you've got nothing. I was like, ah, oh, fuck this, man. I can't because because you know, I can't be I can't be too much of a cunt, otherwise they'll they'll stop supporting me. <laughs> I can't be too ruthless, can I? So anyway, all these fucking cunts are bullying me, uh, and then uh, I eventually managed to appease them because uh, for some reason there was some meme about me reading them a bedtime story. So I decided to go on, and look, I didn't think I was going to be recorded during this at the time. Looking back on it, of course I would get recorded doing this. I uh, ended up just reading them a bedtime story, and they fucking recorded it, and they put it in here, and then some... And if and Because if recording it wasn't bad enough, dude, you know... Recording me without my knowledge. Of course, they then take that recording and then add music to it. So, I don't know. This is what they made. This is what happens in the fucking Discord. Um, is it going to play? Something next to my um, bed. It's, uh, it's called The Next Generation of Condoms. <laughs> um, this isn't just a box of condoms. This is the latest in condom technology for a truly intimate sexual experience. Our skin feel material is soft and comfortable for the most natural fit and feel, allowing you and your partner to feel everything. This isn't just a box of condoms. This is the closest thing to wearing nothing. The end. That was a beautiful story. Thanks, man. <laughs> that was that was a yeah, uh, I truly understand what it's like to have a penis now. And you know what? That's enough. <laughs> so I had to deal with fucking anyway. So if you want to join the Discord group chat, uh, occasionally, uh, you know, there's a lot of you in there now. You can all gang up and bully me. patreoncom spears. All it costs is, uh, you know, six dollars a month. What is that? Cents a day just to destroy my self-esteem when I come home too tired from a gig. Man. Fuck, that was. That was that was brutal, but I copped it. But hey, man, it's all it's all it's all happening in there. All that that's all the uh, fucking banter. Uh, also, if you uh, haven't checked out Jasmine's podcast, check out Ravenous Podcast uh, by Jasmine R T O. Jasmine A R T I O. It's really good. Um, if you want, if you would like a, a, a strong woman in your life, not not too far in your <laughs> in your life, mind you, man. I um, uh, speaking of uh, plugs, I almost, dude. It's happening, right? I've grown shitloads online. We're on radio now. I almost got myself a nice little corporate deal, right? And that's what I want. If you'll excuse me, I need to find my fucking inhaler after that. Listening to myself getting bullied by all the Discord cunts is about to send me into an asthma attack. Just go ahead. Stupid I am. Anyway, so here we go. Back again. Should have edited it out, but I won't. If you want a good podcast, go listen to Ravenous. Um. Yeah, man, that's right. I uh, I, I almost got, I almost got a corporate deal that I was really excited about, dude. So uh, the 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 management that we have for the radio have been talking to a bunch of brands because they're trying to get get us some 
fucking deals, you know. I got to pay for my flight somehow for this for this tour I got coming up. So I'm like, oh, an ad deal will be nice. So anyway, we almost got a deal with Jetstar, where all Luke and I would have to do is like dance around and and be like, yeah, Jetstar's the best. And I'm like, oh, that'd be good because that's a nice, honest ad. I use Jetstar, you know. I'm not on fucking Virgin money yet. You know, Virgin Lounge money, I'm going to get there one day, legitimately. Not today, not this year, one day, right? And I just thought, how amazing would it be if Jetstar paid for my Virgin flights? (laughs) That'd be so good. I'd just be like, thank you, Jetstar. Here you go, Virgin. It wouldn't even, it wouldn't even touch my bank account. I would just be like, thank you. Here you go. Thank you, here you go. And it'd just be like, a, you know what? Fuck even sending it to me. I would just be like, oh, could you uh, transfer that to Virgin, please? And Jester would be like, what do you mean? You did the ad. I'd be like, oh, no, no, I, uh, I, I'm just trying to buy some Virgin flights. And they would be like, well, you know, we would, you're doing an ad for us. We'd probably give you free flights. And I would go, <laughs> no. <laughs> but we didn't get it. So, uh, you know, I'll be eating my words and flying Jetstar very soon. Um, man, how's that George Pell shit, huh? That dirty fucking pedo. He got sentenced. Uh, he got sentenced today, and uh, it's he. He got six years, which doesn't sound like a lot, but I listened to the sentencing, and uh, the judge basically just took in his uh, his old age, and he was basically like, "Yeah, look, uh, you're seventy seven, so six years for you is sixty for a twenty year old. So you're probably gonna die in prison, mate. Enjoy." Um, so that's good, you know, um, and, uh, he still has an appeal, so you can't say he's 100% guilty yet, but, yeah, yeah, you can. You know what's funny? The Vatican still hasn't, like, fired him. <laughs> They're still like, ah, we're thinking about it, you know, he's a pretty good fucking, you know, George, he might have, he might have fucked two kids literally, but, you know, he was pretty good at, at being the treasurer for the Vatican, or whatever that job is. Wait, okay. That fucking business makes $74 million in profit a year. There is no one treasurer. You have an army of accountants. So what the fuck does the, the, the treasurer of the Vatican do? Like, what's his role? Other than fucking kids, what does he do? I don't know. Why do they even need one? Can't they just get QuickBooks? <laughs> Imagine if the Vatican had QuickBooks, man. That'd break the whole app with the amount of money just coming in. The app would be like, all right, so uh, you need to pay. You made $74 million. You uh, currently owe the government uh, $50 million. And the Vatican would be like, no, we don't pay tax. And they'd be like, oh, sorry. And then, uh, I don't know. Anyway. I'm I'm struggling. I don't know if you can tell, but uh, I'm struggling to make uh, a, 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 an old man molesting boys funny. Um, but hey, man, come see me on tour. Maybe I'll pull something out of my ass, or maybe George Pella put something in. All right, that was that's enough. <laughs> what else did I do this week? Just having a look here in the old in the old fucking notes. Got bullied in Discord. We've covered that. Um. Oh yeah, I'm I'm uh, planning a trip to America in May. I want to go. Uh, not to perform. Uh, you can't you can't perform in America uh, unless you have a very special visa green card thing. It costs like a, it costs like literally ten thousand dollars to get this visa because you got to pay a lawyer and you got to pay someone over there and you got to set up a business. It's a whole fucking thing. So. I don't know. It's something that I might get at some point, but uh, I'm going to have to save up a lot of money, obviously. Uh, but I can go there to just like see it and be a little tourist and probably film some videos as well. I just can't perform. So don't get your hopes up if you're American. I'm sorry. America is the goal. That's where I'm headed towards, uh, but it won't be this year. But I am going there. I'm going to go to New York for two weeks, and then I'm going to go to LA for two weeks. And I'm just going to try and uh, uh, suss out the, the stand-up comedy scene. I want to I wanna vibe with all of the YouTubers that are there and all of the stand-up comics that are there. I've been reaching out to a few American comics uh, uh, that, are, that are getting back to me and uh, we're, we're planning some shit, which is cool. Just a bit of a, bit of a, bit of a holiday tourism networking trip for me because I just really want to go to uh, America and I uh, feel like now's the time or May is the time. So I'm organizing in that. Organizing that. <coughs> I can hardly speak, dude. Man, you know what? 
<laughs> this is, oh, that's right. This is fuck. So, um, bro, I I terrified an uh, an old woman the the other day. I was uh, I ordered an Uber, and uh, this poor fucking woman, right? Ordered an Uber, and I was I just happened to be there was like a seat outside on the street where I was. I got some food, and then I ordered an Uber because I was going to some meeting. Uh, and, uh, so I sat down on the seat and it was outside like a seniors community hall, specifically for Chinese people. It was a Chinese seniors community hall thing, right? So I order the Uber and it's like, <clears throat> it's like a white car. And I'm one of those people that has never learned what cars look like. Cause you know, when someone's like, oh, it's a Ford Focus. If you said that to me, I don't know what that looks like. Oh, it's a, it's a Ford. It's a, it's a Camaro. I don't know what that looks like. Well, a Camaro just makes me think of the Simpsons episode where they say, Can you Nero? And it rolls over and they die and then catches on fire. That's all I think. I know what a Hummer looks like and I know what a Lamborghini looks like, but that's kind of it, you know? Uh, a, a Toyota Hilux, I know what that looks like because, uh, you know, uh, someone in my family has one, but th that's it. That Those are the only cars that I know. And I'm pretty sure that I've never seen a fucking Uber driver rock up in a Canyon Nero because, one, it's fictional, two, it would probably roll, you know? Maybe we wouldn't get approved for the safety ratings. I'm not going to see an Uber driver rock up in a Lamborghini or a Hummer, you know? <laughs> I don't know what cars look like. So every time I'm on the fucking Uber app and it goes, oh, it's a, it's a Toyota uh, Prius. I'm like, I don't know what that looks like. It's a, it's a Honda. I don't, see, I don't even know the breeds of car. It's a Honda. Yeah. And then this Honda, yeah, rocks up. I don't know. I just look at the license plate and I go, or, and the color of the car, and I go, that's the one, right? Anyway, <clears throat> Uber's like, all right, your car's coming. It's a white car, a female Asian driver. I'm like, cool, great. I love this. Very progressive, okay? I mean, it might die on the way, but you know. <laughs> no. Um, so I'm like, I'm, I'm looking out for a female Asian driver in a white car. License plate starts with N. So then the Uber app goes, oh, your driver is arriving. Please be ready. I'm like, cool. She'll be pulling up any second. Then white car driven by uh, an, an older Asian lady pulls up license plate number N, right? And she pulls up and she pulls up into the driveway where I'm sitting and she stares at me. So I walk up to her and I walk up to the car. She's looking at me the whole time. I'm like, this is my Uber. Asian woman, white car, license plate starts with N, looking at me, expecting me to get in the car. This is my Uber. I think you know what is about to happen. <laughs> so I go to the, f I walk up to the car and I get in the back seat because, hey, I don't want to talk to you. Oh, oh, you want to have a conversation while I'm in the Uber? No, we're not going to do that. You know why? Because I'm, because I don't want to talk to you. Not your mate. Sorry. Not your mate. Not a cunt. Just also not your mate. You know? Oh, how, how long have you been driving Uber for? Oh, you know, just a little bit. Oh, yeah, busy day. Yeah, mate. You're heading off to work. Now I've got a day off. Oh, yeah, that's a pretty good a day off. Do you want me to turn the radio on? Oh, nah, man. I want you to shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> That's every conversation I have. I don't want to have it. Hey, hello, sit in car. Good. How are you? Good. Yes, good. Okay, going here. Yes, that's it. Thank you. Goodbye. Get out. Five stars. If you don't, give me five stars. All right, bro. If I don't come in the back seat, I need five stars. Because that's the thing, right? All I have to do as a passenger is is not vandalize the car. You give me five stars. If I don't vandalize the car or punch you or grab some tits, five stars. That's all I want. You know. I mean, I, I always get, I always get, if if I arrive alive, five stars for the driver. That driver could rock up in their underwear with the dick out. If we got there on time, it's a five. Because I think it's kind of funny to have a shithouse driver on the roads. I'm like, oh, that's funny. I'll give that guy to someone else. <laughs> you know, arrive on time. Whatever happens during the drive, whatever. If we get there on time, it's five stars. You know, get in the car. I sit in the back seat wearing a Ku Klux Klan outfit 
eating a burger, driving with their eyes closed, one hand on the wheel, one hand over their eyes, while a GPS is is pointing in the wrong direction and we watch Netflix. If we arrive, it's a five. <laughs> if we arrive, it's a five. And that's all I care about. And I feel like there should be the same rule for me because I don't have a very high Uber rating and I don't know why because I'm never an asshole, but I also don't want to talk to you. What is my fucking Uber rating? Man, I I did the dumbest shit uh, the other day. Uh, One of the Uber drivers when I was in Flinders Street, I had to get the trains were canceled for some reason and I'm 25 with no license, so I'm a piece of shit. Although I have been driving every week. Although I have said that many times before and then given up on it within a month. But I have been doing it and we're on the roads and I haven't killed Jazz yet. I'm working on it, but uh, I haven't killed it just yet. Anyway, so Flinders Street and then I I booked the Uber. And then it turns out that where I booked the Uber was just a no-drive zone. But I was confused because the taxis could drive on it. But for some reason, the Ubers could not. So... I was like, so the, anyway, the, the cunt ended up just sending me a bunch of messages and he waited for ages around the corner while I walked there. So I was like, oh, well, the next day when I got home, I woke up and I was like, oh, that was really nice. He didn't have to do that. I wasted like 20 minutes of his time and he didn't get paid for it. I'll give the guy a tip. So uh, I'm like, oh, open up my Uber app and uh, my last driver, I'm like $5 tip, right? So put five bucks in, give him a tip. And then it goes, thank you. You have tipped your Uber Eats delivery driver. And I was like, fuck, I didn't want to tip that guy. He just gave me a fucking sandwich. He didn't do anything special. In fact, that Uber Eats guy lied to me because every fucking, every single Uber Eats delivery driver is a liar because every time I see that little map, it's an icon of a bicycle and then they rock up in a fucking car with their friend. Why does every Uber Eats delivery driver have a friend with them? What are they doing? It's one bag and all you're going to do is drive there, pick it up and come back to me. Why is your friend there? What are they doing? Why does every Uber Eats delivery driver have a friend in the passenger seat? They're useless. Also, that's a shit day. How does that conversation go down? Hey man, I'm, uh, I've got a full eight-hour shift of delivering food to strangers. Do you want to sit in the passenger seat for free and not help? Oh yeah, man, that sounds fucking awesome. I have no idea what a good time is. I've literally never had fun in my life. So I, I have no perspective on this issue. This could be fun. All right, man, sweet. Just so you know, I'm not going to cut you in on any of the money that I make. That's all right, man. You're an Uber Eats delivery driver. You don't make any money. No worries. I'll see you there. I'll sit next to you for eight hours for free, having no fun. Yeah, sweet, man. Sounds like a fucking plan. My best friend, Luke Kidgel, could call me tomorrow. And if he went, hey, man, I'm going to do Uber Eats delivery driving. Do you want to hang out and do it with me for eight hours and sit in the passenger seat? I would hang up, delete his number, cancel our radio show, block him on all social media, and avoid him. And then if I saw him in person, I would go into an uncontrollable fit of rage and probably kill him for that disrespectful request. No, I'm not going to sit in the passenger seat, Luke, while you deliver Uber Eats. (laughs) But anyway, I accidentally tipped the guy $5. And then I was like, well, fuck, man. Now I'm going to... Now what do I do? Because this guy's just got a tip that he didn't deserve because he delivered a sandwich. He's not even going to split that tip with his fucking mate who had to sit in the passenger seat. So I'm like, well, what am I going to do now? I wanted to tip the other guy. <clears throat> also, do I have dementia? Because I tried to tip an Uber driver and I tipped an Uber Eats driver. Those are two different apps with two different words, two different fonts, two different logos. What's wrong with me? Probably a lot of things, mainly what I'm wearing. So I'm like, all right, well, I just open up the fucking Uber driving app and then I tip the other guy $5 and I was like, well, now I feel like a piece of shit. <clears throat> so tip 10 bucks. What was I telling? The, what story was I telling before? I was just started yelling about Uber Eats. Um, I can't breathe, dude. I don't know if you guys can tell this, but I can't fucking breathe. Oh, that's right. I terrified an old Asian lady. Anyway, so I'm getting in this fucking car. I don't know how I, how we got off this. It is, it's like a it's a story where one thing happened, but for some reason it goes for 20 minutes. Welcome to the podcast, if you knew. <laughs> I walk into the car. She's looking at me. 
I go, I get into the back seat, and I see on the back seat there's a hat, and I'm like, oh, there's a hat in the back seat. I've never, I've never seen anything on the back seat for an Uber driver. That's a bit unusual. That's right though. If we get there on time, I'll give her five stars. She's still looking at me. I've approached the car. I'm touching the door handle. She's looking at me like nothing is wrong, right? So I'm like, oh well, this is clearly my Uber. White car, license plates N. Woman looking at me, not scared. So I'm like, this is my Uber. I open up the back door. I stick my head in. I go, hey. And she goes, hi. And then I put my leg in. And then I'm like, ah, this is just weird. So I go, oh, is uh, is this the, the Uber? And then she said, ah! <laughs> and she just screamed at me. And then I went, oh, shit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then I shut the door. And she went, ah! And then I walked away with my hands up like a hostage situation. I just terrified the poor woman. And then I went and I, I sat back down on my fucking park bench. And I, I, I realized that it was outside that Asian, seniors Asian community center. She only pulled up there so she could go into the community center. But I like tried to get in her car, backed away, and then sat on the park bench outside the community center. She just stared at me, terrified, and then she reversed the car and drove away. I ruined her whole day. She tried to go to a fucking senior's community center to make some friends and improve her life in her old age, and she thinks that I just tried to murder her Ivan Milat style. And she's probably never going to go back. Oh, don't go to that community center. There's a fucking giant long murderer. <clears throat> so anyway, I hope I hope uh, I hope she gave me five stars. <laughs> oh man! I, <clears throat> speaking of murderers, I watched uh, with Jazz a um, a documentary about what's the the Zodiac killer, right? Really interesting. It wasn't a documentary, sorry. It was a movie. Real, <clears throat> really interesting, really good movie about the Zodiac Killer. It's on Netflix. Definitely go watch that shit. Uh, there's not going to be any spoilers in this because, uh, I mean, it's all real life facts, so there's no spoilers. But, but dude, the Zodiac Killer, you know, big claim here, but that guy, for a serial murderer, sucked at murdering. In that movie, right, the first, the first time he kills, it's a young couple in a car, He walks up to the car, he shoots the girl a couple times, she dies, then he shoots the guy literally eight times. Shoots him eight times, drives away, the guy survives. How do you fuck that up, man? How do you fuck up shooting someone eight times, it's dark, you got him by surprise, and the dude still lives? Zodiac killer sucks at killing, more like Zodiac failure, right? But not that's not all, right? Not only did he fuck that up, then later, right, he, he starts he starts killing a bunch of people and his whole thing is he sends letters to the news and demands that they publish them, otherwise he'll keep killing. And he became really famous doing that and uh, that's why the news doesn't do that anymore because it encourages other serial killers. Fucking idiots. Sells papers though, so fuck ethics, right? Anyway... <coughs> Next, he, he kills a few people, right? Whatever. I mean, you know, he adds to his high score. Then, he's, uh, he's hitchhiking. Oh, no, he's driving down like a highway. There's a woman with a baby by herself. Uh, he, he makes her pull over and tricks her into thinking that her tire's fucked. And then uh, he goes to repair it, but actually he loosens it. So when she drives off, her wheel falls off. And then he's like, don't worry, I can help you. I'll give you a ride. She gets in his car. She's got a baby. He tries to kill her, she gets away. Couldn't even kill the infant. That guy sucks, alright? What, you call yourself a serial killer, bro? How do you fuck that up, you know? Anyway, whatever. That's two failed attempts at murder. You know, whatever. Everyone, everyone fucks up twice. You know, this is a three-strike policy. Let me tell you. He got his third fucking strike, right? Then, the next thing he does is he finds a... Few few months later, he finds a young couple having a picnic on a, on the uh, in an isolated area, <clears throat> and and all of this is real. So it's actually kind of horrible that I'm saying, "Oh, you suck for not actually murdering them," because they're real people. <laughs> but also, they're probably still alive. So hey, man, Zodiac Killer, thanks for being shit at your job. Anyway, so basically, he, he ambushes this fucking young couple, ties them up. 
they're defenseless, and then he kills one of them, and then he stabs the dude like six times, runs away, again, the guy survives, okay? How do you fuck that up? It makes me want to go out there and do his job for him. <laughs> no, it doesn't. But like the whole, I piss Jazz off the whole movie. Because the whole time they were making up this Zodiac killer to be like this evil mastermind. But he fucked up half the murders he tried to commit. So every time he would go to kill someone, I'll be like, I hope you do it properly this time, dickhead. And Jazz goes, stop it. That's not funny. Those are real people. And I go, yeah, and they're still alive because you suck at killing, dickhead. It's like in baseball where they go, hey, batter. Hey, murder, 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 murder. <laughs> Just fuck, fuck up his swing, his stabbing action. I don't know, dude. All I'm saying is how do, you, how do you shoot someone eight times and not kill him? How do you stab someone six times and not kill him? How do you kidnap a woman and an infant and then somehow fuck up both of those? That's like four fucked up murders, you know. Hey, Zodiac Killer, I know you're probably dead by now, but, you know, tighten up your form. <laughs> Alright, that's enough of this. <clears throat> Alright, what else do I want to talk about here? I think, uh, oh, that's what I wanted to do. Ladies and gentlemen, it's finally happened. The work we've been putting in has been paying off. I may have not got a Jetstar deal, but let me tell you, we have finally an official sponsor for the podcast. Uh, welcome to the show, Ridge Wallet. All right, so as you guys know, I make fuck all money out of YouTube because I don't want to change my content. So sponsorships are a great way to, uh, you know, just make things even up a little bit. And uh, Ridge reached out to me after I made a video about how I was struggling with ads. And they said, hey, dude, we'd love to sponsor your channel. You can do whatever the fuck you want. So, hey, man, welcome Ridge Wallet to the channel, uh, to the podcast channel, even. The Ridge Wallet is a minimalistic front pocket carry wallet. It's uh, about the size of a fucking credit card and maybe the thickness of, like, five. It's really small and, like... It's actually a really cool idea, especially if you're going out at night. Like, you know, you got your fucking... What do you want your massive wallet that your dad gave you for, huh? What do you want that for? Get a Ridge wallet. RidgeWallet.com slash Lou. Use code Lou. 10% off free worldwide shipping. You don't need your massive fucking uh, dad wallet full of receipts that, let's be honest... You're not going to put inside your fucking accounting app anyway. What you're going to do is you're going to put them in your wallet and keep them there for so long that all of the text rubs off. And then you just have like 30 pieces of white paper in your wallet doing nothing. Fuck that. Get yourself a Ridge wallet. Um, but seriously, they're cool for going out because sometimes you don't want to carry your big wallet and it's got a massive imprint on your jeans and you look like, look like a dickhead. Uh, you just carry, you know, one card, your ID, and maybe a bit of cash on the strap on the back, and uh, works really well. You just pull it out, get your cards, and then bam, you got a Ridge Wallet. They're uh, really, really cool, and uh, if you want to get one and support the channel, uh, ridgewallet.com slash Lou, and then use code Lou for 10% off these uh, really, really good things. They sent me like five different wallets. They're all so cool. They do phone cases as well. And every single one you grab supports the podcast and my channel because they sponsored both, which is so cool, man. And uh, honestly, such a big help. I'm already putting the money straight into flights to uh, to film a film a couple cooking videos. So shout out to Ridge Wallet, ridgewallet.com slash Lou. Use promo code Lou for 10% off and free worldwide shipping. Support the people who support me and the world fucking spins. Ridge Wallet! And that's how I'm going to end every single ad read from now. And if they don't like it, hey, I'll send them a refund. No, I won't. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> Alright, so with that being said, let's get into miscellaneous bit at the end. And hopefully, it'll be better than last week, with uh, questions-wise. Uh, but also, I haven't read these yet, so it'll probably be quite shit. Um, as you guys know, if you don't know, rather, uh, miscellaneous bit at the end is the worst part of the podcast. It's where I an answer questions sent. Answer? Quest answer? It is where the Lord of the Land answers questions from the peasants. Now, if you uh, have a life advice question you want some advice on or you have a funny story, send it through to podcast at lewspears.com and I will uh, get to you if I think it can be entertaining or ignore it if I think it sucks. Um, all right. Where are we? Hey, uh, Lewis. I l oh, this one's called Fat Cunt Wants to Lose Weight. Hey, Lewis. I love your shit. 
My name is Benson. I'm almost 21, six foot one, and I'm 150 kilos. I woke up one day and I looked in the mirror and it's just like I realized, it's like I just realized that I'm a fat piece of shit. I'm wanting to make a, a positive change in my life, but I'm struggling to get motivated. I'm a full-time uni student, so I'm both broke and busy all the time, so I can't really justify getting a gym membership. Since you were a personal trainer, I hope I was hoping to get some advice to drop the kilos without having to go to the gym. Though I would still rather have a heart attack climbing some stairs, breaking my back while falling down them, and being a vegetable for life, than listen to miscellaneous bit of the end. Have a shit one, and I hope to catch you at your next show. Thank you, dude. Um, okay, so losing weight. Okay, positives and negatives. Negative, 150. That's huge. That's unhealthy. You can't be that weight and, 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 and live a, a proper life, basically. Um, positives. You weigh so much, you can drop weight real fast. So, look, there are some really good diets that are out there that can help you lose weight uh, quite fast that aren't too expensive to do. Keto is a good diet, cutting out carbs entirely. Uh, I would say uh, a, 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 just a bare minimum for you, if you don't want to spend money, just, just avoid sugar. Avoid sugar in all its forms. If you're having fizzy drinks, if you're having like uh, chocolate or flavored milk, if you're having uh, just anything that has an excessive amount of sugar, even yogurt has heaps of sugar in it. Uh, generally, people that are quite overweight are having way more sugar than even they realize because it's in everything. Like, uh, if if you even as a nor even as as a normal sized person, if you're not actively avoiding sugar, you're having too much every single day because it's in everything. Um, I would say start having a, a proper, real, good breakfast so that you don't eat like shit throughout the day. A really good breakfast is wheat bix and milk or uh, oats and milk if you're American. Porridge and milk. Just have that. No sugar. Don't add any fucking sugar to it. You don't need it. It's in everything else. Avoid that shit. That's what makes people fat is sugar. Um... And uh, gym memberships, bro, uh, they're so cheap. I pay eleven dollars a week. Can you? Can you? If you really think about it, I don't want to sound like a cunt here. Surely, the amount of money that you would be saving on food if you go on a bit of a diet and eat less food, you could put that money towards the gym. If you can find a gym that's close to you, twenty-four hour gyms are really uh, cheap generally. Don't fuck with Fitness First, Planet Fitness, all of those massive chains. Go to a 24-hour one that's open all the time. Don't sign a contract. Do those weekly things. Google weekly gym membership in my area, 24 hours. Those are the cheapest ones 100% of the time because there's never staff. You don't need staff there. Um, and uh, they're always really cheap and they're 24 hours, which is also good if you're a uni student. Uh, if you still can't afford a gym membership, you don't need one. Uh, what you can do is at, I mean, at 150 kilos, when you're that big, eating, eating less sugar and trying to eat healthy will do so much for you. Losing weight and putting on weight is like 70, 80% diet anyway. So what I would recommend is just walk for an hour every day. If you already walk heaps, try jogging, go swimming. Anything that'll get you active, ride a bike. Uh, that's all all really good shit. And do that five days a week. Uh, at your weight, you don't want to go rigorous because you can damage your knees. You don't want to do anything like high impact. You don't want to do any sprinting. You don't want to do anything like that. I would just say walk as fast as you can walk for an hour, five days a week. Cut sugar out of your life. Carbs are good to avoid too, but that is harder. Um, but... It, it is, it will work. Um, and really just, man, the key with all of this stuff, whether you're trying to lose weight or put on weight is education. And you need to learn more about food. You have to understand what foods are bad for you, what foods have in them. Like literally just have a look around your house and have a think about the food that you buy every day. Write it down and fucking Google it and work out whether or not that's a healthy food. If it's a healthy food, keep eating it. If it's not healthy, cut it out. You don't need it. Um, and I would say with the motivation thing, 
I always say this, motivation is unreliable and, it, and you cannot count on it. What do you think I do, right? I come into work, I've been doing two videos a week. Do you think I really wake up like I'm asleep? I'm just asleep and I go, Oh my God, it's a new day. I can't wait to go to the gym and make some... Vi I don't do that. I wake up just like you and I go, Oh, fuck, I gotta go to the gym. This sucks. But I go because I built up a habit. Habit is what you want to build. Because now, uh, if even if my alarm doesn't go off, often I'll just wake up at 6.30 in the morning anyway because I've been getting up at that time for years. And then, and then I get up and I have a shower. I, here's, here's how long I don't feel like doing something, right? I wake up. I immediately don't want to get out of bed. I fucking do it anyway. I, I stand on my alarm and I turn it off. I, I'm like, oh, I need to have a shower. I don't want to have a shower. I step in the shower. I don't want to get out of the shower. And then I get out of the shower and then I wet my face with cold water and then bam, all that shit's over and instantly my mind is like, well, I got up early, I had a shower, I'm clean, it's in the morning, I fucking better not waste this day because otherwise I got up early for nothing. And then I have food, I go to gym and then I go from gym straight to, uh, to the warehouse. What does help with fitness is making shit easier for yourself. It's hard to eat healthy if you don't meal prep. You got to prep your meals. And that means like every Thursday night or weekly, whatever fucking night works for you, at fucking 7, 8 p.m., you cook an entire week's worth of food. You put it in Tupperware containers and you put it in your fridge. And it's not the most fun thing, but you know what? It takes two hours max. Usually it takes me an hour and a half. I listen to one podcast. I don't listen to music anymore because it doesn't work. But I listen to one podcast and then half an hour of silence. You, I'm assuming, could listen to a podcast and 30 minutes of fucking music. Here's an idea. Every time you listen to my podcast, instead of doing nothing or instead of listening to it while you walk, why don't you just listen to it and make this fucking podcast the soundtrack to you prepping your meals once a week? That's another thing that really helped me is uh, when I'm prepping my meals, I'm like, oh, you know, I don't listen to a particular podcast that I like unless I'm prepping my meals. And that way it gets me in the headspace of, well, if I want to fucking find out what Bill Burr's been up to and laugh at his podcast, I need to make some food. And it's like a trade-off, you know, I get to listen to something funny and stupid and I'm being productive at the same time. And it's, you know, it's a win-win. I haven't lost anything. And then throughout the week, it's so much easier to eat food because instead of thinking, what am I going to eat? What do I have to buy? What does this have in it? Does this have heaps of sugar? All I do is I grab two Tupperware containers out of my fridge, take them to the warehouse, and that's my food. Um, so that's what really helps me. And uh, that's what I would recommend to you is uh, motivation is unreliable. Habit and routine is something that can help and fix anything. It sucks for a month, but once you do something for a month at the same time, or at the same time once a week, or, or whatever the fuck, really works. So I hope that uh, helps, dude. Best of luck to you. Uh, but yeah, main thing is to recap, cut sugar out. You don't need it. And I know you're eating too much, and you know you're eating too much. Uh, cut out junk food and just prep your meals, start a routine, motivation is unreliable. You can't sit there waiting for a feeling to come out of nowhere that you can't even explain or, 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 or grasp to motivate you permanently to live a lifestyle. That's not how it works. No one's walking around going, I'm so fucking motivated. Sometimes you don't want to do it, but you got to do it anyway. Habit is more powerful than that. All right, that's it on the podcast. Thank you very much for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, make sure you check the license plate before you get into an Uber because otherwise you'll make an Asian woman go, ah! All right, that's the end. Uh, please do support me on Patreon if you want to join the Discord chat and uh, join the banter and everything that we have going on. Uh, it funds a bunch of stuff. I'm using uh, some Patreon money to fly to Perth to work on a few videos with some creators that I know you know. Uh, and that's very exciting. Those videos will be coming out. And uh, yeah, man, ever since Patreon jumped up, I'm so excited. 
Uh, I'm already planning on bringing back Cookie Without Instructions. We just need a few more patrons. So jump on. We almost have 370. I'd love to to, to pass 370 this week. So uh, if you want to join the movement, if you want to fucking bring back real comedy and help me not worry about ads or anything like that, just keep doing this. And you want early access to everything that I do. Patreon is the way to do it. And uh, I also have Subscribestar if you don't want to use Patreon. So thanks, guys. I'll talk to you next Sunday. I hope you have a fucking shit one. RidgeWallet.com slash Lou.